BHR, like all surgical procedures, does come with some risks. It's important that these are well understood before making an informed decision to proceed. Firstly, all operations inherently carry risks of complications, from the risk of the general anesthetic to other general risks such as post-operative pain, bleeding, or even infection. And relating specifically to joint implants, metal-on-metal -metal devices can occasionally fail due to inadequate lubrication of the joint. And in order to be lubricated, the cup has to be precisely positioned so that the lubricant fluid, which is the body's own natural lubricant, doesn't escape and allow metal to rub on metal, which causes them to fail. Finally, and this complication is unique to resurfacing procedures such as BHR, is the very real risk of fracture of the neck of the femur in the first three months after the operation. That's this area of bone underneath the resurfacing. So in a conventional hip replacement, we replace that bone with that large piece of metal. In a resurfacing, we just take off the outer layer of bone to profile it so that the resurfacing head will fit over the top. Thus, the problem is the bone can be weakened during the procedure. This one has a tiny little notch in it from the cutting tools, and that can act as a stress riser that allows the bone to break off completely. The main danger of this type of operation is because they shave the femur that you can have a stress fracture there fairly easily. So the most important thing is to let the bone fully recover before you put any sort of stress on it. The problem for patients is that after about a month, they feel fine and they don't want to sit at home. They want to get on with their lives. Their hip doesn't hurt, but this could be quietly developing a crack. The crack is painless until it completes, and that's a disaster. So it's very important for patients who want the good long-term function of a resurfacing to be willing to be patient for about three months after their operation. You'll arrive at the operating theater at the Matilda Hospital having had no food or drink for six hours. The operation is performed under general anesthetic, meaning you'll be unconscious for the duration. The operation is essentially in two parts. First, placing and fixing the acetabular cup into the pelvis, and second, resurfacing the damaged femoral head itself. Once the hip joint is exposed, the acetabulum is reamed out to make space for the acetabular cup. In order to get the acetabular cup in the resurfacing in the right position, we use the standard instruments with the addition of a spirit level and a laser guide. We position the patient very carefully on the table to get the pelvis in the right place. And then we place the cup and using the spirit level and the laser guide, put it in what we think is the right place. The problem is, despite the positioning devices, the patient's pelvis can move and introduce error. The technique that we use to try and prevent that is to place the cup and then take an x-ray. We can then measure the x-ray during the operation and if the cup needs to be readjusted, we simply reattach the cup introducer and we can reposition it. If the cup is in the right position, we can cut these wires attaching the cup introducer and we're left with our accurately positioned cup. We've measured 100 consecutive cups placed in this way with the x-ray and seen that we've managed to put all the cups in the right place and this is being published so that other surgeons might consider using that technique. In the second part of the operation, the arthritic femoral head is profiled to accommodate the new resurfacing, and it is cemented into position. Pop that on, and 
Before closing the joint, more medications are injected into the joint to reduce post-op bleeding, and an antibiotic sponge is also inserted deep into the wound to reduce the chance of infection. Finally, the hip joint is closed up and the patient allowed to wake from the general anesthetic in the recovery suite.